Webpack has been an amazing bundler so far. It has a huge community, a lot of plugins, a lot of support, and a lot of things you can do with Webpack. However, there's a new kid in the town that is White. And it's not really new because White has been around for some time, but it is really, really catching up momentum these days. In this video, let's just go ahead and cover what White is, why it is better than Webpack, and how you can make the switch. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So I'm going to quickly discuss the theory part and then we'll actually see a actual white implementation. So we are talking about white versus webpack or in short, we are talking about module bundlers. So before actually getting into white versus webpack, let's actually understand what exactly is a module bundler and why do we need one. So you see when you're building, especially your front end applications, you write all the nice code in your IDE and you edit files and you have all the nicely written code over here. But what your browser needs is a certain style of JavaScript, a certain style of CSS. Maybe you're using SAS, maybe you're using TypeScript, maybe you're using Babel, for example. You're using all this tooling to help yourself as a developer, right? So you are, you know, optimizing for developer experience. The end goal is to actually optimize for user experience, which also includes shorter bundle size, you know, smaller files, compressed code, performant code, and so on. But this is this happens on production. This happens on, you know, inside your editor. But when you're actually trying to match this with the output preview as well, you need a dev server of some sorts, which is cl quite close to performant as production because you cannot work in a very slow environment, but at the same time has a lot of features like hot module replacement, or you know live reloading and debugging support and so on so your developer experience is maintained by all this tooling the job of the bundler is to actually bundle this into a sane but fast format for the browser so that you can work it in a development environment and finally the bundler also spends a lot of time optimizing the assets and everything for production all of this work can be done by a bundler like webpack so where does white come into the picture well white is exactly what webpack has been doing more or less and obviously webpack has a much more mature ecosystem but white is kind of similar to what we are doing with webpack but with a slight difference the way webpack works is that let's say if you have your app app.js as the starting point so what webpack would do is it will start traversing your app so maybe you have my screen one s1 let's say this s1 includes three files it maybe includes login includes sign up it includes dashboard okay let's assume this is the this is the kind of a network the file structure the import tree which we have so webpack over here would actually start transpiling and start converting this code even for the development server right for the development server as well webpack would say okay i need to transpile this i need to convert this i need to do something with this so it'll start this code over here it will see it requires s1 s1 needs all these assets so it's gonna go into those and compile them down it's gonna go further and compile everything down right that's how webpack works white on the other hand works in a different way white says that hey i'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the entry point but that's it the rest of the stuff I will leave to the browser what do we mean by that let's say if you are visiting this s1 as package and you're visiting only login screen which is available on login right so now as a user when you visit this page over here slash login this is the time when white actually triggers a build process that means when you're visiting this login page only this branch of your code is actually getting compiled let's say you just use this component over here so all your bundler has to do is compile this part of the web app right and you can just omit the rest of the app and this is like very important when you're working with a large application because you have maybe tens of components maybe hundreds of pages and you whenever you want to make a change you don't want your bundler to just you know transpile everything from start of course web white does a lot more optimizations on top of this it will pre-compile your you know bundles and dependencies which are already being used for example react and react tom it will just pre-compile them and inject them every single time instead of going over through them all the time but the fundamental approach which white takes over here is only possible because it enforces you to use ECMAScript modules that is ESM within the browsers you would have seen the syntax most likely in TypeScript if not in JavaScript or you know node itself import something from something right so this syntax is ESM right and ESM is supported by browsers ESM is a module 
bundler, basically a way of splitting files into different modules, which is finally supported by browsers, right? Common JS was supported in Node.js, but not exactly in browsers, but ESM is supported in both. So White exploits or uses this fact that browsers support ESM. That means browsers can selectively request for these packages, depending on which screen you are on, because that's exactly what White is exploiting into, the fact that you as a developer are writing dependencies, which are needed on that particular page, right? So White on the dev tools does not do any, on the development front, does not do any tree shaking or, you know, just, just importing the required things and stuff. It imports all the stuff which you tell White to import on the development part and on the production builds, it fall back to like web pack works, you know, in a slow, steady way, just figuring out everything and then only using whatever you need to use. But on the development build, it will probably fire a single HTTP request on every single import you do, right? So if you're importing a bunch of packages and if you go ahead and look at your dev tools, you will actually see a lot more import calls compared to when you're using, let's say something like Webpack. Another fundamental difference is that White's bundler core is actually ES build, which is a bundler written in Golang. And that is definitely faster than Webpack because Webpack's bundler and the core and everything is actually written in JavaScript. And JavaScript, is not a good language when it comes to computationally intensive tasks, right? We have talked about this a lot of times. JavaScript gets significantly slower if you are doing a heavy compute event or heavy compute thing. There are better languages which are natively compiled, C, C++, Golang, Rust, all these languages are much, much faster than JS. If you're doing a things, a few things over and over again, a lot of time and traversing a project and a tree and a graph and compiling it and optimizing it, it's all compute intensive, right? There is nothing IO intensive except for opening the files in this case. But yeah, I mean, this is where things like, you know, in terms of two links, things like Golang and Rust and, and these things can actually really, really benefit even JavaScript developers because you get really fast tools if we use these tech. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the magic of white. Okay, so if we take a look at uh, actual white playground, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, let's say white React playground, which our code damn playground uses white under the hood. So if we go ahead and create this, you're gonna see that when the white app boots up, it boots up with all the ESM modules being loaded, right? It's not a common JS shell app. It's a proper ESM based app. So first things first, you can see that white starts up really quickly because it does not compile everything in your project. It compiles only the things which are required. And now if I open this in the new tab and if I go ahead and inspect how this thing is working, you're going to see that if I go to Netflix tab and give it a little refresh, you're going to see over here that it starts sending me all of these files over here, app.jsx, index.css, you know, the runtime is there, a chunk file is there. And if I start even importing a lot of more, you know, imports over here and start importing stuff, you're gonna see all of those imports come up as regular files themselves. And even if I go to app.jsx and see the code, you're gonna see we are using a lot of ES6 plus syntax, import stuff. Obviously there's a bunch of React patching going on in the background and white patching going on in the background, but it's mostly, you know, imports and just more modern JavaScript and more modern web standards. And when you do something like import something from, let's say, React Refresh, you're gonna see that is the time when that particular thing gets downloaded, that particular new thing, the new bundle gets downloaded. You see in the index.jsx, we wrote, we want to import, let's say, this app right here, over here, and that got imported. Then we wanted to import index.css, and that got imported, right? So that is how, this is how ESM, ES modules, ECMAScript modules are working. And of course, under the hood, like I said, it is actually a, you know, ES build bundler, which is working. And that is why if I make some changes over here, it's super fast to refresh and it gets updated within a few milliseconds because the hot module replacement and everything works actually super fast because white is just compiling and rebuilding a single file which you change, not everything. So will a bundler like white be able to replace Webpack? Eventually, definitely, if Webpack does not make a comeback with some sort of native speed optimization or some sort of ESM like this magic, Webpack would be dying very soon because of bundlers like white, but it will still take a lot of time because Webpack has a lot more tooling and plugins and 
support and community there right and we have seen over and over again in the at least in the programming community it does not matter if a thing is really really good what matters is how well it is adopted by the community itself like in case of for example javascript the webpack still has a huge community and that's not going anywhere anytime soon but if you're a web developer it's a great time to actually look into white as a potential bundler for your next project because it's not only just fast it actually does not give you any sort of disadvantages on production because like i said on production and it rollbacks to how Webpack operates in a way and you get the best of both worlds. Faster development time, faster speed, at the same time, you know, better production builds. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you like this. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching.